What's going on everybody, Merm here, and today I'm bringing you a tips and tricks for survival difficulty on Fallout 4. Uh, basically, survival difficulty is the highest difficulty in Fallout 4. And it is... a lot of people compare it to uh, Hardcore Mode from New Vegas, but I actually don't think it's like that uh, very much at all. Uh, namely because Hardcore Mode, you could play Hardcore Mode easy. Uh, it, there were two, basically, Hardcore Mode wasn't even a difficulty, it was actually an add-on, pretty much. It was an add-on to the difficulty. Uh, like, you, Hardcore Mode didn't make you play on the very hard difficulty. You could play Hardcore Mode very easy and stuff like that. Here, Survival is very hard, plus the other difficulties added onto the Survival difficulty itself. So, <clears throat> uh, so, basically, if you don't think you're a confident enough Fallout player and you haven't had a playthrough in Fallout 4 yet, don't even consider playing survival, in my opinion. Unless you really think that you're, you know, you've put enough time into the other Fallout games that you can just hop in here and instantly start playing on survival, I would not recommend it at all. I would say play at least one playthrough on hard or very hard before uh, throwing up to survival difficulty. So you kind of know a build, because that's actually my first tip. Know a build before you go in. Uh, make sure that you have a build in mind that you're going to be putting all your perks into specific spots so that you don't waste any uh, perk at all. And that is really important because there are three main perks. Uh, and this is pretty much my second tip. Uh, there are three main perks that you want to get if you're playing on survival. Number one, you're definitely going to want to get armor. And that is because uh, you're going to be getting armor throughout the game. Uh, especially because on Legendary you're going to find... Er, Excuse me, on survival you're going to find more legendary enemies, and each legendary enemy drops legendary loot. So as you can see, here are three pieces of armor that were dropped from legendary enemies. Uh, the Destroyer's Right Leg, or actually this was bought, but uh, as you can see, these armor, I have customized them. Um, if I can show you here, they're all shadowed, except for the bottom left leg, which was muffled, the synth one, because you can't shadow it. But everything I am owning has been shadowed because I have a sneak build, except for the helmet, because you can't do that. Uh, so, you know, it's very important for my build because it is harder to sneak, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it's very useful. Not only that, but you can also add on damage resistance, which is hugely important on survival difficulty. Uh, the next perk that you're definitely guaranteed want to get is toughness, and you want to get all perks in that. Luckily, it only requires one endurance to get that. Uh, you can, pro I mean, I get, I also kind of want to get chem resistance because I love using my chems, um, and I also have chem mist that I want to take. So those are probably what my next ones are going to be, other than uh, this and you know stuff, stuff like that. But I definitely want to get the chem perks, but that's not what I'm here to tell you about. Toughness. Toughness is toughness and armor are the two of the three. The other one is medic. Medic is just, uh, as you can see, stim packs go from doing 30% regeneration to 100%, and so does Rataway, which is also helpful. So uh, basically, another thing that I wanted to uh, give you tip on is health regen. Uh, health regen works differently than it does in the normal. Uh, hard, very hard, easy, and very easy difficulties uh, in Fallout 4. So basically, if you have played those difficulties, you know that health goes up pretty decently after you use a health item. So let me show you how quickly it goes up when you use a health item in uh, this difficulty. Let's use one stim pack. As you can see, it's going up yeah. extremely slowly. However, what we can do to help that is if we, let's say we use a stim pack, now let's use two purified waters, soft shell mylurk meat, and mutant hound chops. Now watch how fast it's going up now. Actually, you probably want to use a little bit more than that. You probably want to go, uh, something like that. Now look how fast it's going up. It's going up a little bit faster. And of course you can use more. I recommend kind of fanning out so you don't use all of one item. Maybe you throw in a blood pack, that, carrot. And now it's going up much faster. So I know it seems ridiculous that you use so many items even though you don't need to. However, if you're in a tight fight, you will want to do that. You won't, you won't care about wasting those items. As you can see, I have... How many stim packs do I have? I had 165 stim packs. Uh, let's see how many I've used. I know you could tell in the other uh, games how many you've used. <clears throat> stim packs, come on. Impacts. 
Oh, you can't tell how many stim packs you've taken. Oh, okay, 36. I've only taken 36 stim packs, and I'm almost like a level 30, I believe. So, level 27. I'm level 27, I've only taken 36 stim packs the whole game. So, as you can see, I try to limit the number of stim packs I take. And so, you can waste a, a few if you need to during a fight. You can use two or three uh, right in a row so that your health goes up faster. It's okay, you got you know plenty of uh, plenty to go around um, so those are really uh, some of my more basic tips another one is going to be slightly spoilery but hardly any it's one of the first quests you get in the game so this really shouldn't be a spoiler to anyone um, so basically early on in the game you're gonna get a quest called follow the freedom trail and this quest involves uh, doing following the freedom drone obviously and you're going to meet another faction and uh, it's they're called the railroad and basically uh, you're gonna meet them and you're gonna have to do a few quests for them and eventually uh, they have a robot in their base uh, that will eventually give you a quest where you have to find what's called the DIA cache and you basically it's a very easy quest you just walk into a building walk two feet pick something up and then return to the base that's it However, when you're done with that, you can talk to someone in the base named Tinker Tom, and Tinker Tom will uh, give you something called the Ballistic Armor mod, or something like that, Ballistic Weave mod for your armor, and this is why you want to get the armor perk, other than, of course, shadowing your combat armor, or uh, your armor. Um, so as you can see here, I have the Mark IV because I have a rank 3 in armor, but basically you can get the first one without it, and that'll actually give you some really good damage resistance anyway, but if you go all the way up, you can take these shitty army fatigues, which are terrible. I actually have another set in here. Um, let's see what they do without that. So dirty armor fatigues have zero, uh, damage resistance and zero energy resistance without this mod now look how many uh look how much resistance it has with it with the ballistic weave mod it now has 90 of both and if i had it all the way if i had the fifth perk in or the fourth perk in armor i could put it to 110 each so as you can see that is ridiculously good and that is really honestly one of my bigger tips find something i, I believe to apply the ballistic weave to it it needs to have uh zero uh damages and zero everything um, so that's why I have the army fatigues. They work really well because they have zero and then you can just make them incredibly powerful uh, on, Before this I was using a vault suit that I'd upgraded once or twice uh, to give it more damage and energy resistance But uh, I did this really late in the game I would honestly suggest as soon as you get the follow the freedom trail quest line do this to get this incredibly good armor Like the second that you can this is better than any armor in the game that I've heard of other than power armor uh, so those are basically quick tips I have for Fallout for uh, survival difficulty. If you guys have any more tips, let me know. I'll probably be doing an assassin, a second assassin build. This is actually uh, also an assassin build I'm doing. I know I uploaded one last week, but this is different. I'm using energy weapons. I'm doing some pickpocketing because it actually works out pretty well. In survival, you don't want to take too much damage from legendary enemies. So what you can do is when they're alone, you can kind of sneak up behind them and plant a grenade in their pocket. And uh, that basically you avoid fighting uh, let enemies completely. Sometimes it's it's situational, but when it helps, it definitely helps. So I'm trying out uh, basically everything. Instead of a crit build, this is 100% sneaking and sneak attack critical build sort of thing, or sneak attack uh, times two, I guess. Not it's not a critical in this game. Uh, so I'm um, basically eventually, maybe in a week or so, I'll right. combine both builds and make basically the perfect assassin. Um, Energy weapons aren't as good in this game for sneaking as they were in the other games. In the other games, they almost acted as silencers uh, themselves, and in this game, they don't seem to do it that well. But yeah. basically, those are my tips for uh, survival difficulty on Fallout 4. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know how you guys are playing survival or which difficulty you guys are playing on and which builds you're doing.